What is Amazon AWS? The short answer is this. AWS is a way of establishing a worldwide data presence without the cost of building a cloud. And that's the buzz nowadays, right? Cloud, cloud computing, cloud storage, cloud technology. What, what is the cloud? Well, behind that, that big fluffy cloud is actually just a bunch of data centers. So I'll, I'll say a bunch, but it could be one, could be 50, could be, could be five. And that, there's a good question to ask. If, you've ever, if you ever deal with a cloud vendor, you might just say, how many pops do you have? How many point of presence? How many data centers are you in? So back to what AWS is all about is very similar to shipping a package. You're like, well, okay, where are you going with this? So think about it. You've got a package. You need to get it. Let's, uh, let's say uh, I've got, uh, this is the United States, right? <laughs> or uh, an elephant falling down. Uh, let's say I've got, got a, uh, a package here in Arizona. I want to get it up here to Oregon. There's two major ways of doing that. One, I can do it myself. I can get in my car that I need to make sure is tuned up and ready to go. It's got oil. It's got gas. Uh, you know, everything's, everything's looking good, and I start driving. And I you know, drive, and I stop for gas and fill up. And, and I get all the way to Oregon, and I have that good, warm, fuzzy feeling of getting on my car, pulling out that package, and saying, here you go. Here's the package. That's one way of doing it. The other way is to pay a shipping courier to do it for you, which most people do because you think, okay, for 30 bucks, I can uh, ship that package up to Oregon and they take care of it. They've got the infrastructure already. They've got the trucks. They've got the people to drive the trucks. They've got the planes. You, you see what I'm, I'm saying here. They've got all of the infrastructure that's there. Welcome to Amazon AWS. When you are trying to establish a cloud presence, your goal is to get into a data center. You want to get your servers connected on the internet in the best possible way. So you go, it, the traditional way, doing it yourself, you go in, this is a rack of equipment, you install your own firewalls, your own switches, you install your own servers, uh, you know, set up a SAN, which is really just a storage, just a whole bunch of storage to put all of your stuff, you know, hard drives and all kinds of stuff. You buy your own internet connections in and out of that, that data center and, and, and you get that set up. Again, it's awesome. I've done that. It's amazing feeling to have that, but that's one data center. Huge upfront cost of all this equipment, huge monthly cost that you're paying for all of the connections and all of this stuff. Amazon looked at this and said, we've built this worldwide infrastructure for our site. Why not let people use it? Why not structure this thing into regions? Which is really massive points of presence where Amazon is at. And they're always expanding. They're worldwide. So you can say, I want, I, you know what? I want a server in this region. And then they're going to say, okay, well, what zone in that region? What's a zone? What's a data center? Amazon doesn't just do one in a region. They might do two or three different data centers, four data centers in a region that are all connected together. So again, going back to the do-it-yourself model, oh my goodness, to get into three data centers and have all that replicated, duplicated equipment between them all, massive costs. But instead, what you do when you come into Amazon is you say, you know what, I want a server in the West Coast region. And it comes up and says, okay, well, what, what data center do you want that in? And you choose your data center. What, what kind of server? And you're like, oh, I want, a, I want a beefy server. And they make a nice little drop down for you where you click the little drop down and they say, okay, well, if you want a really beefy server, let's, let's go with eight cores of processing, you know, 16 gigs of RAM, you know, it, again, the specs will change over the years, but, but you get that drop down and you say, oh, I want, I want a beefy server. They say, okay, well, that's, that's going to be, you know, a dollar an hour or $2 an hour, or whatever the case may be. So again, going back to the shipping, you do it yourself, you drive up there, you're paying a fortune to get that box there, or you go to Amazon AWS and you say, oh, okay, well, I'll pay a buck an hour for using it and setting up that server. And now you get not only one data center, but then you get replicated to multiple data centers, not just the server, but your data to where you can, you can set up multiple servers in the data centers. You've got your data replicating between all these data centers. And that's just one region. You can start spanning to different regions and establish a true worldwide presence with Amazon AWS at a fraction of the cost. I mean, again, Think of the model, the model. You always have to come back to that model. It's a model of efficiency that's been built for you that you can just say, I, I just want to start rolling out 50 servers worldwide, which would typically be a cost prohibitive uh, uh, setup for you. Now with Amazon AWS, you click a few buttons and you're there. You pay for what you use. It's, it's billed hourly. It's billed based on storage. And, and then from there, you just kind of roll out what services you want. Oh, if I could start talking about the services, 
<laughs> if I could, it would take forever. There's just a ton of services that you could do from load balancing to DNS, the list goes on and on. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.